Howdy there, YouTube. Just real quick, remember, I am not a professional and nothing I say should be taken as 100% fact unless proven at least from another source. I am a Christian and will always stand for the truth no matter where it leads. So, I apologize I have not been uploading a video for a while. Life has gotten pretty crazy. I decided to do a quick video about something that happened yesterday in Oregon near Mount Bachelor and the Three Sister Volcanoes and a couple other things I want to tell you guys. So, on February 6, 2018, at 2325 UTC, there was a 1.6 magnitude explosion at negative 1.6 kilometers in depth. Now, as we see here, this explosion was pretty close to the base of Three Sisters, which is right here, and Mount Bachelor, which is right here. And they're volcanoes, guys. I'm not saying this is related to volcanic activity, but I do think it is strange because there are no quarries or mines within at least 10 miles of the explosion epicenter. Now, I do think there's a quarry up here, but within 10 miles, I don't see any quarries or mines at all. So, as usual, whenever I see an explosion on the USGS earthquake site, I usually check this site, with it, which is earth.noschool.net, for any sulfur dioxide emissions in the area during the time in question to see if it's connected at all. So, let's click Earth, then stop the wind flow, the play button, and then you click Chem and SO2SM, and switch the time to UTC, which I already did that stuff. So keep your guys' eyes right in this area right here, where the green circle is. So the time this explosion occurred was 2325 UTC on the 6th, which is 325 p.m. Pacific time on the 6th. And yes, I do notice there it has been an increase lately in sulfur dioxide all along the western portion of northern Oregon and southern Washington. But that is not what we're going to be talking about today. Now, this satellite imagery updates every three hours. So this is about two hours before the explosion occurred. Now remember, keep your eyes on this area as I move time forward. And I will do it about three times in a row. All right, so you notice that there's an increase of sulfur dioxide at the same time in almost the exact same place that the explosion occurred, which is right about here. Why don't we see if this is the same spot? I have already input the coordinates from the explosion in Google Earth, so let's check. All right, so here we are. Here's where the 1.6 explosion occurred. There's Three Sisters, there's Mount Bachelor, there's the area where the explosion occurred. And if you go just due north, Looky, looky, 44.45 north, 121. 44.45 north, 121. There's the sulfur dioxide emission. It is almost the same place. It's just a little bit north, so it might not be connected. But I did think that that was very strange. So the sulfur dioxide emission came from this area, which is pretty close to where the explosion occurred. Could this be a coincidence? It started at the exact same time that the explosion occurred. It really did. Could this be a new mine that they are creating somewhere near here? Could a crack have opened up? Who knows, but I doubt we'll ever get an answer from USGS. If they do reply to my email about this, I, you guys will be the first to know. Don't worry. So besides this explosion that occurred right here next to Three Sisters, we have another explosion over here. Let me zoom in real quick. It was a moderate 1.0 explosion just west of the first explosion. This occurred February 7th, 2018, 107 UTC. Let's zoom in here a little bit more. Sorry guys, my computer is very slow. So just bear with me real quick. Alright, there should be nothing there. And as you can see, there are no quarries or mines in this area that you can see. Unless they got the location completely wrong. But if you look up here, I don't see any mines or quarries at all. There's just fields, trees, dirt, grass. No mines or quarries. If any of you watching this right now live in this area, in this area of Oregon, let me zoom out a little bit. In this area right here, 
please tell me why this 1.0 explosion occurred and let me know if you heard it or saw it or if you felt it because I don't know why the hell that occurred. All right, guys. Now, I live about 20 miles northeast of Seattle, Washington. Uh, I recently have been concerned. You know, e technically, even before I started studying volcanoes and earthquakes, I've been concerned about the soon coming Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. This subduction zone that I live near could be the most dangerous subduction zone in the entire world and has the capability of producing a quake equal to that or stronger than the Japan magnitude 9 earthquake that created a devastating tsunami and took out the Fukushima reactor. This is the earthquake catalog on the USGS site. This actually is a really cool tool and I've used it many, many times in my research in the past, especially for school. I wanted to do some digging. As you can see, I have the option set at magnitude 7 right here. And, oh, magnitude 7 and above. From February 7th, 1908 to February 7th, 2018. These settings will show every magnitude 7 and above earthquake in the world that occurred in the past 110 years. I wanted to see how much pressure the Cascadia subduction zone is under right now. Please bear with me, the computer is a little bit slow today. All right, look at that. Notice all the earthquakes in the world in the past 110 years. Now remember, this is magnitude seven and above. Let's zoom out a little bit. Notice the ring of fire. You see this from down here all the way up, all the way around, that is the ring of fire. And here's a picture of it right here. You notice the similarities? See the same shape? Obviously, there's earthquakes back here, but the Ring of Fire is the most tectonically active and volcanically active area on the entire planet. And you can see that there. Notice the sim similarity in the shape of the pattern of earthquakes. 1,328 earthquakes, magnitude 7 and above, struck our planet in the past 110 years. Over that time period, pressure has been relieved all around the Ring of Fire. This is what we should see. You see right here, we should see that many. I mean, it's relieving the pressure. What we should not see is a lack of earthquakes at the Cascadia subduction zone. But look here, that is exactly what we see. Again, guys, sorry to repeat myself. This is magnitude 7 and above over the past 110 years. Not one magnitude 7 has hit the Cascadia subduction zone in the past 110 years. Wow. There is so much pressure that builds up over a period of 110 years that there should be way more earthquakes in this in this area. But there is not. There is a large blank spot off the coast of Washington and Oregon, another blank spot off the coast of California, and another blank spot off the coast of Mexico. Of course, there have been quakes smaller than this that have occurred here. But this shows there has to be a lot of pressure building in these three areas, especially right here. There has to be, I mean, there's literally 110 years, not one magnitude 7 and above. We see them up here. See up this line, we see them all up here. We see some right here. We see some down here. And of course, we see hundreds of them down here. But you look at the Cascadia subduction zone, nothing. And here's the Hebgen Lake earthquake, 7.2 Yellowstone National Park in Hebgen Lake in 1959 I'm very confused as to there's none when I saw this it didn't help my concern at all this shows that when Cascadia does go which I believe it's gonna go pretty soon it will be extremely powerful I think it will be bigger than the Japan earthquake because look over here Japan had that 9.1 you remember that in uh, what was it oh what was it March 2011 I believe it was the 9.1 Look at how many quakes in the past 110 years, and they got a 9.1. From all that pressure, they got a freaking 9.1. But we, over here, look, nothing. So when Cascadia does go, when, I'm not saying it's going to go soon, but it is going to go eventually. But when it does go, it's going to be big, guys. There's no way it's going to be under an 8.0. It's going to be huge. Because even Japan got a 9.1, and they have a lot of pressure being relieved over the past 110 years. We have nothing. Except right here in Vancouver Island, there's a 7.5 in 1946, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. 
But remember, guys, don't let any of this scare you, really, because we don't know when everything's going to happen. No one knows for sure. Because God does not give us the spirit of fear, but he does give us the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Always remember that. Always. But we do see this is showing a lot of pressure building. Let me zoom out just one more time just to show you guys. You see all this? Look at that. The whole ring of fire. A lot of pressure being relieved all over. But then once you get to about North America, it calms down. Holy crap, guys. All right, just one last thing real quick, guys. In August of 2017, I created an earthquake statistic graph for the Long Valley Supervolcano. And here is the data that I used right here. It's pretty long, guys. I did a lot of research right here using the USGS earthquake catalog. And let's see. Where'd it go? Where'd it go, guys? I'm looking for it. All right, here's the box coordinates that I used for the information on the USGS earthquake catalog. So if you guys want, you can go to the site and input these box coordinates for yourselves if you want. Here's the graph that I created, guys, with one of the free graph creators online. I compiled all the data. And uh, each section is one year from August to August with all earthquakes magnitude 0 0.2 and above. Notice since 2001, there has been a steady increase in earthquakes at Long Valley Supervolcano. Then 2016, there was a drop and then boom. Well, from August 21st, 2016 to August 21st, 2017, there were 7,822 earthquakes magnitude 0 0.2 and above, with more than half of these earthquakes occurring within only six months. I just thought you guys might want to get an idea of how the activity in Long Valley has increased over the past 16 years. Now, the earthquake swarm in Long Valley that occurred in 2017, as stated in one of my first videos, started almost the same exact time that the swarm at Yellowstone did. I don't know why. Could be connected. Who knows? But I thought that was very strange. If anyone would like any data associated to anything I talked about in this video at all, please email me at the email address in the description box below. Well, now for a conclusion. Watch this really cool bison at Old Faithful. I think that might be a pile of poop right there. Yeah, the bison were having a party at Old Faithful the other night. Man, they've been really coming around the area lately. I don't know why. I mean, of course, you see them all the time, but they've been spending a lot more time near the visitor area than I've never ever seen them. Especially that coyote that walks around that looks kind of like he's starving a little bit. Are they having trouble finding food or something? I don't know. I know they're not scared of humans over there. The bison aren't. But still, I just thought it was strange. You know, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and God bless. Stay tuned for more. I am busy, but trust me, I promise I'll be back.